Hi everyone, it's Adam with Milo's Restoration, and today I've got a video for you about refinishing and kind of rebuilding, really, this dining room table. We're actually going to turn it into a coffee table for my client, but the first thing that I needed to do was remove all these old um, pieces that held these tongue and groove boards in. I'm going to replace them, and I'm going to use the same method. The only difference is, is that I'm going to use pocket hole screws instead of just uh, countersinking them. So to give it a little bit of added strength, in my mind anyway, I like to alternate the pocket hole screws. So I'll screw into every single one, like every single plank, but I'll alternate which side of the board that I'm screwing into. I just think it helps it a little bit. It might just be something that's my imagination, I don't know. So I apologize for that background noise. I've been having some sinus problems recently and I've had to keep a lot of fans on just to keep the dust down and add some filters to them. So in the future, hopefully I should have another solution for it, but for now it just makes kind of a lot of annoying background noise, so I've just been turning it all the way down. So I measured where I wanted to cut at and you could have done this two different ways. You could have cut it, made a platform for it, um, and then kind of let that post sit on top of the platform, or you could do which I'm elective to doing, is screwing some boards into the side of it and then mounting those into it and kind of like framing in a base around it. You'll see what I'm talking about later but yeah that's my plan i'm going to kind of frame in a base around the post so off camera i had to re-glue the base so i re-glued the base and while i was waiting on that to dry i decided to go ahead and start on the top so the top i'm going to clean it with some wax remover which is from old masters it's a kind of like naphtha modified product and then i sanded it down and used uh, general finishes tobacco just regular water-based stain and i stained the whole top i sanded to 180 or maybe 220 and then what i did was i raised the grain and then hand sanded with 220 and the reason you do that is just because of it's a water-based stain water-based top coat you need to raise the grain with water and then sand it down before you finish it So I just wiped off all the excess stain and just tried to make sure it was a really consistent look. It's pretty easy to work with. For the base, I put the same kind of corner bracing that it had in originally. The only difference is, is that instead of just using nails, I use screws. And I screwed to each side to hold the corner in because basically it's just tongue and groove board. And they didn't really even use glue. They just nailed it in on the sides. So I kind of use a similar method to just help secure it and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to frame in that base like I was talking about there will be two more boards that go the opposite direction to that and that will be what holds the base in and there's me spilling some Centurion I'm going to be using Centurion semi gloss uh, it's a 1k product it's a full acrylic product it says that you can actually use it for refinishing so I'm really interested to start trying it in that kind of situation where I don't completely strip down the uh, the previous finish. I would just like to see how it works. I'm using a 1.8 also on a Fuji spray gun and you'll see me catch a drip here so I'll have to fix that but it's not that big of a deal.
so unfortunately I didn't get any footage of me sanding the top, but I did get some of me sanding the base. This finish is really old, it was really easy to remove, it just sanded it with 180, didn't even have to use any 120. It'll clog up your sandpaper a little bit more than you might like it, but to me that's a lot better and honestly probably a little bit healthier for me than using chemical stripper and having to strip everything off. It's just not a fun process. And I, after that, I, after this was after 180, I raised the grain, and then I'll typically do my final sanding with 220 and a hand sanding with 220, and then I'll put my stain on. I get pretty good results with the general finishes, stain, and that process. I don't mess with any kind of pre-stain conditioners or anything like that. The closest thing that I'll do to that is using some kind of, uh, like a seal coat like a spit coat of shellac and uh, you know significantly thin down shellac but no I, I don't I don't know I don't find this products work very well um, you know I just find I get good results from using good quality stains I don't use any kind of like Home Depot stains or anything like that they just never give me good results I just apply the stain with the microfiber. Um, this stain can surface dry, I believe. So if you have an area where it's not really absorbing like you want to, you can just take a pad and just kind of very lightly apply it and not completely wipe it off if there's an area that's getting some poor absorption for whatever reason. I didn't have any of that on the original uh, base or tabletop, but I did have to patch up a few areas and what I did was I sanded it and then I had to let it kind of sit for a minute and then I wiped it as lightly as I could. It kind of has the appearance of like a gel stain or something like that when you do that and it's not as good as getting that like good quality absorption but it'll help you in a pinch and I could see areas where you're doing refinishing jobs like this sometimes it might not absorb all the way and you'll have to kind of figure something different out. So you want to be very careful whenever you're sanding your first coat especially. I'm not going to use a power sander, just going to use a surf prep, super fine. I'll take a vacuum and make sure that I vacuum all of the uh, clear coat that I sanded. This stuff sands really easily and so you just want to be careful that you're not sanding through it. When I apply my second coat, I try to be a little bit more careful in making sure that I don't get any drips or runs. I figured out what it was too, that Fuji cap. Um, I had to. I took a pair of channel locks and tightened it, which probably isn't a good idea, but it did stop the leaks, so that's all I can ask for. Um, not really looking forward to having to do that every single time I want to spray, but I guess if it solves a problem, then it solves a problem. And I'm already in this spray gun for a whole set of needles. I've got basically every needle for the Fuji guns, which is something that I never had for any of my other guns. Um, you can get all the needles and air caps for one spray gun for Fuji for only like $250, which, I mean, is a really good deal. If you're somebody that's been using HVLP a lot, you know that it's not often that, that it's that cheap for the needles and nozzle sets. So, moving on to the base, I set this piece of walnut to level. And those that's going to be where the base... Those pieces are really just to help me get it straight on the base and make sure that it sits level. Um... I'll do a little bit of adjusting and that's really just temporary to hold it for me so I can attach it and make sure that it's it's like the, the, the tabletop sits level on the base and then I can attach it after that. It's I've tried like holding it up and using a level and all kind of crazy stuff. It just never really works as well. It's almost it's always easier just to kinda make a little temporary platform for it and then remove it. And 
you will never see that part of the base. Um, so it's not that big of a deal. So I did two coats on this base and the second coat, I was a lot more careful. I got a few runs, had to fix, but nothing really significant. I just wasn't used to this product. It goes on a little bit thinner than typical Centurion products. And after I got it sprayed, I mounted the table and it was good. I kind of tested it a little bit just to make sure it was sturdy. Everything seemed good. I liked the way that it was looking. And after that, I took it outside, got some pictures of it, and I brought it to my client. She was really happy with it. This is, was her grandmother's table. So she loved seeing it and this and being able to fit it into her new home. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you want to see more restoration content like this.